I came, I saw, I crashed pretty hard when I got home, but I made it through CES and saw some amazing TVs and just wanted to run down a list of what I think were the best TVs at CES 2023. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison and I hope you enjoyed the videos we produced out of CES this year. There were some surprises there, a lot to look at, a lot to talk about, and we'll keep on talking about it all as we make our way to review season. But for now, let's just recap which TVs I think deserved a nod as being the best at the show and why I think they have the potential to be the best TVs of 2023. We'll start with what I think is an obvious choice or choices, and that would be the Samsung S95C and S90C QD OLED TVs. Samsung didn't just give us the 77 inch model we were asking for, they came up with a new model series as well. So the S95C is the top dog QD OLED TV from Samsung. It has the new QD OLED panel that I'll talk about in a moment, and it comes with a one connect box and an enhanced audio system. So that puts it kind of in the premium tier. Then there's the new S90C, which has the new QD OLED panel, comes in 55, 65, and 77 inches, but otherwise looks a lot like the S95B did last year, which I know is a point of concern for some folks. There's this notion that the panel cabinet isn't strong enough and that the TVs are getting bent out of shape in shipping. And that's a warranted concern since the first one we saw was a little warped, but what I'm told is that returns due to damage have not been rampant. Take that for what you will. At any rate, if the question is whether the S90C is more robustly built, I honestly couldn't tell because it was a very strictly look but don't touch affair at the Samsung booth. I do have to say though that it looks very similar to the 2022 model, but looks can be deceiving. So we'll have to wait for it to show up here or maybe I'll fly to New Jersey again to get an early look at it where touching is allowed if not encouraged. Either way, the new even brighter QD OLED panel could make a game-changing TV even more game-changingly awesome. I just made that term up, but you get the idea. If the color brightness and overall luminance ends up being as bright as it can be, that's up to Samsung Electronics, then we could be looking at another year that Samsung has a dominant top-tier TV. Next up is the LG G3 OLED, and it's impossible not to think of the LG G3 OLED as LG's answer to QD OLED from Samsung and Sony. But the fact is, LG Display has been working on developing brighter OLED panels for quite some time. We got the OLED EX with deuterium and heat sinks, and then LG Display developed OLED Meta. That's Meta, all caps, not the Facebook parent company. And that uses Micro Lens Array, or MLA for short, to reclaim light that is usually lost in the panel and put it out toward the viewer. Now, a lot of folks in the comments have been quick to point out that the higher brightness claims may not apply to color brightness because of the white subpixel. But I can tell you that perceptually, colors on the G3 OLED were brighter than before, for sure, without looking super washed out. So it's fine to speculate, but until we actually measure the G3, we don't know what its actual color volume capability is. But besides all that, the G3 just looked straight up amazing. If the idea was to make an OLED TV that looked punchier in a bright room, I think LG has done just that. And I think it was a pretty clever bit of engineering that deserves a shout out, which is why the next video you see from me will actually be an explainer on how MLA works and what we can expect from the new G3 with Meta Panel. Next is another LG TV, and that would be the M3. Now, the M3 is not an entirely new series of OLED TV per se. The TVs themselves are the same. What makes it different, the headlining feature is this box to which you connect all your components, and then it wirelessly beams the audio and video signal to the TV. So at this point, all you need to do is plug the TV into power, and you don't have to plug in anything else to the TV. No running conduit, no running HDMI cables, and wondering if they're gonna be good enough over the distance. The wireless transmission is lightning fast and super high bandwidth, so there's virtually no latency and there is no loss in signal quality. Anyone mounting their TV over their fireplace is gonna love this, but honestly, I think this is the coolest connectivity development that I've seen since Samsung's One Connect Box. 
Next up is the TCL QM8. This is TCL's new flagship TV, and it doesn't just replace the 6 series that we had in years past, it aims to exceed that TV. It's available in sizes running all the way up to 98 inches. It's got mini LED backlighting, more backlights and dimming zones than TCL has ever offered before. And although they didn't talk it up a ton, it looks like the processing has seen some improvements as well. The demo footage being played on this TV looked incredible. Off-axis performance still needs a little bit of work, but otherwise, this is going to be one of the highest performance TVs you can buy in 2023, and the price, as usual, will probably be surprisingly low. Now here's an interesting TV for you, the Hisense UX. Now this is a bit of a gamble for Hisense, as it's a super high performance TV with peak brightness exceeding 2,500 nits. Honestly, it'll probably do 3,000 or more. It's got a ridiculous number of backlights and dimming zones, some incredibly effective off-axis performance, and Hisense says it's working on improving its processing. Now, this is a TV patterned after a model that's been selling in the China market for a couple of years, but it's hard to pull it over to the US because frankly, a pricey Hisense TV could be a tough sell here in the US. But folks, if you want it to be sold here, you can make that happen by buying them direct from Hisense once they're on offer. That may be the only way to make sure that these top performing TVs from Hisense make it to the US and eventually to store shelves in the future. The next entry is from Hisense 2, and that's the L9 Triple Laser Laser TV. Yes, it is technically considered a TV, though it's an ultra short throw projector and ambient light rejecting screen, all paired together in one package. But this thing is ready to tackle bright rooms. The screen is included. Hisense makes the screen. It's got high gain and reflects a good amount of the projector's output back at the viewers while rejecting light from above and coming in from the sides. I mean, there are many situations in which you will never get a 100 or 120 inch conventional TV into a space. Even 85 inches can be too big for some situations like certain NYC apartments. But this thing will fit just fine. And at this point, the only thing keeping me from suggesting that this might be the best big screen option for most folks is the price, which we don't know yet. But I mean, it's high sense, so I'm expecting it to be a pretty attractive option this year. Now the last TV on this list is actually not a TV you can buy in the US, unless I think you hit up Value Electronics and have them ship one to you, but I'm referring to the Panasonic MZ2000. It was at CES and it was one of the best TVs there. Even though they don't sell it in the US, uh, I think it still needs a mention. We don't talk a lot about Panasonic here, but their processing and picture quality is right up there next to Sony's. Superb TV. I wish I could get one here. Hell, maybe I will just for fun. And that's the list. There were a lot of other great TVs at the show, but these were the best of the best the real headliners, and I'm gonna get every single one of them in for review, including that laser TV. Fair to say 2023 is looking like a really fun year. And hey, if you wanna join in the fun, consider subscribing and ringing that notification bell. I look forward to seeing you on the next video, and until then, here's two other videos I think you might like.